Hey, welcome to Tech Savvy Productions channel. This will be a short and concise presentation on the steps and tips to install a bootable M.2 PCI Express RAID controller. In the video descriptions below will be links to our video notes. They will be both in Word and PDF, whichever you prefer. Now for some of you, this short, concise video that you're watching right now will be all you'll need and you'll be able to successfully install your RAID controller. I may not even add anything to what you already know. I will also do a second video, which I will put in the link in the video descriptions below, if you would like a longer, more technical version of this same process. In that video, I'll give more details and advice for those that need additional help. Both will have notes to download. It's important to understand that consumer grade motherboards and firmware are generally not designed for the most part to support bootable PCI Express RAID adapters. But higher quality motherboards with feature rich Southbridge chips and the higher end CPUs are adding support for the option of booting to PCI Express RAID drives. Now PCI bootable M.2 RAID controllers provide significant storage subsystem improvements to your operating system's performance. And for most folks, they simply don't need this feature. But if you're doing video editing, 3D animation, high resolution photo editing, professional gaming, CAD, computer aided engineering, graphics design, or even web development, you need this. Now in my demonstration, I'm going to be using a Highpoint SSD 6202 NVMe bootable RAID controller. I'm going to put two M.2 solid state drives on it, and I'm going to set it up for RAID 0. It really doesn't matter how you set up your RAID. The process will be basically the same. I'm going to install it on Windows 10 again. If you're doing Windows 11, the process will be the same. Let's start by making sure that you have updated your motherboard BIOS to the latest firmware version. Make sure that is the first thing that you do. Now, in my case, my RAID controller comes with a heat sink for the solid state hard drives. If your controller that you're using does not have that feature, you want to buy third party heat sinks for your solid state hard drives. Remember, if they overheat, they're going to degrade in performance. There is also a free utility that you can download and install on your PC that will monitor the temperature of all your motherboard, all your hard drives, including your RAID controller, as well as those two SSDs. That is very important to maintain an understanding of the temperature that you're running those solid state hard drives at. And install your two M.2 SSDs in their slots. Do the mounting screws. Be careful whenever you're dealing with printed circuit boards. Don't over tighten those screws. You can damage that circuit board. Just snug. That's fine. Now most of you will have some sort of dip switches that you will set based on your manual and it will set the RAID that this controller will run at. In my case, I'm going to be using RAID 0. Now listen carefully. If you have a PC that you intend to install the RAID controller in and it still has a working operating system, this is very good because right now you have a RAID controller that you just bought. We don't know that it works. We hope it does, but we don't know for sure it works. You got two SSDs that you probably just bought and you've installed on this RAID controller. We don't know that those work with a working PC. We can test them and at least verify that the RAID controller, the solid state drives are working and determine whether your motherboard firmware detects this RAID controller. We're not getting ready to install it yet. We're just testing to make sure everything works before we go any further. All right, on your working PC, remove all your drives, disconnect them. If you've got M.2s, take them out. If you've got SATA drives, disconnect the connectors. Only thing we want in that PC that's connected is your bootable disk and go ahead and install the RAID controller and boot the PC. Here you see an example where I've done exactly that. My RAID controller is now visible to my firmware, my motherboard firmware. Yes, that tells me a lot of things are okay. Here I'm in some of the advanced features of my firmware and I can see that high point controller. These are very good indicators that the controller is good. I'm 
moving forward in a positive way. Now, the manufacturer that I chose has software that I could install on my operating system so that I can go further and look at the RAID controller, the array, and make sure there's a logical disk. Here I can see both solid state hard drives. Everything is looking good at this point. All the equipment that I'm just purchased looks good. Now with this controller software, I'm also able to see I have three important things. Array controller, that an array has been built from the two solid state hard drives. And this is the most important, a logical disk has been created from that array. If I don't have a controller, an array, and a logical disk, when Windows tries to install, it is not going to work. Now, if the PC that you're trying to get this RAID controller installed in doesn't have a working operating system, go ahead and install the controller. Make sure that no other drives are connected and boot your firmware up and look carefully at your firmware. Does it detect the controller? Does it see the controller as a bootable disk as you go to your boot options? This is very important at this point. Keep this in mind. Your RAID controller must have an array preset and it must have a logical disk set up for Windows to see it when it starts the install process. Every controller will be slightly different on how that does it. With my controller, when I set those dip switches for RAID 0, it did everything. Now this step is very important. Make sure you download the latest version of Windows 10 or the latest version of Windows 11. You can use the Windows Media Creation Tool to create your flash drive, but make sure you don't use an older version of Windows 10 to try to do this. You will not have success. Remember, our goal is that we want to install this RAID controller. We want to boot to a Windows 10 or Windows 11 operating system on a flash drive. As the process for installing begins, it's going to see that RAID controller disk as an option to install on, thereby install the operating system on that disk and boot from that PCI Express RAID controller. Most of your trouble is related to the firmware and the motherboard. That RAID controller will do it all day. This is not a problem of the RAID controller. This is not a problem of Windows 10, not a problem of Windows 11. It's your motherboard and your firmware. Now, if you've installed your RAID controller, you've booted to your Windows 10, Windows 11 operating system flash drive, and and the installation begins and it doesn't see that RAID controller disk that it can install in. You've got a couple things you can do. First of all, get to your motherboard manual and look under PCI Express specifications and look closely at any information that you might glean from those specifications that might indicate the problem. For example, a lot of motherboards, if you put a built-in M.2 solid state disk on the motherboard, it will disable a PCI slot. So be careful with those kinds of things. Do your due diligence and read some of that manual to make sure you're not missing an obvious problem. In my case, I had already had a UEFI hard drive previously and I had secure boot. So one thing that I had to do in my firmware was enable CSM BIOS feature so that I could see all my bootable devices. I removed my bootable M.2 that I had used previously. Then I was able to enable UEFI and see my controller as a bootable disk. Another thing that I had to do was I had to go into my secure boot options and disable and clear all my secure boot keys. That was another issue that I had to beat through. With all that done, remember you have to boot in UEFI. I did see my high point controller as a boot disk, was able to get install and it was done. In the second video, I will take more time and go through a lot of this step by step with you. If you're still not having success, take a look at my second video in which I will go through this more in depth. At Tech Savvy Productions, we welcome your comments and feedback. You have great ideas. Some of you have a lot of experience doing this. Put your thoughts, comments, feedback in the comments below. It's welcome here at this channel.